What's up guys, Austin back with the world's best bedhead, and you know what? It's a good day, it's a beautiful morning. Some days are good, some days are meh, some days aren't that great, today is a good day. And in today's video, myself and Nick, we're gonna take you through another training vlog today, but we're gonna be focusing our training on weightlifting to improve our rowing. So we're gonna be targeting specific exercises in the gym today that are going to help us improve our strength when we row. So as far as rowing being primarily a cardiovascular exercise, strength training isn't necessarily gonna make or break your rowing ability, but nothing wrong with getting stronger. So that's gonna be the plan for today. We're also gonna discuss exactly how we got our boat back to the boathouse and how sort of the last vlog concluded and where we go from here because we're racing not this weekend but the following weekend so race day is almost upon us and right now we don't really have a boat that is rowable so we're gonna figure all that out but first we're gonna go ahead and hit up the weight training so let's get right to it hey it's it's funk master nicky nick what's up dude what's up dude all right so the first exercise we're gonna do is the squat because in rowing one of the primary muscle groups you use are your quads the tops of your thighs and so squats are a great way to build up that strength now in a boat your feet are very close together when you row now that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to squat with your feet close together especially when you're bearing a lot of weight on the bar you want to make sure that your legs are in a comfortable position depending on how sort of your hips are you want to make sure that when you squat down that it's comfortable at the bottom and you can come back up safely without really hurting yourself. So don't feel the need to necessarily squat like how the feet are in a boat. Squat how you feel comfortable. You're still gonna build up that quad strength. All right guys, so the next exercise we're gonna do, arguably more important for rowing, is this idea of hip extension. So we're gonna do our dumbbell stiff leg deadlifts, where we lean over, feeling that stretch in your hamstrings, in your booty, and then squeezing that exercise forward, because that's where a lot of the power in rowing is generated, through that hip swing back. So that's what we're gonna work on next. So next up, we're gonna do the bench press. And while rowing doesn't necessarily use your chest, rowing is more of a pulling exercise, by building up strength in your chest muscles, you're essentially helping to balance out your total body composition. So while it's not necessarily helping rowing specifically, it is gonna help round out your body completely. So next up, we're gonna be doing seated rows. And to really mimic the rowing motion, just like you would do whether you're on the rowing machine or with an oar itself, 
We're working on a horizontal row, pulling in just like you would with an oar or with the rowing machine handle. So we're gonna load up some weight and add just a little bit of body motion as we do that, but really try to work those back muscles. All the way. All the, like all the way. Like all the way. Alright. And to really round out your rowing fitness, it's important to really focus on developing your core strength, both on the frontal abs, but also in the lower back too. And while all these other exercises are gonna help you develop core strength, targeting them specifically with certain exercises is gonna help you even more. We're done. <laughs> All right, so the workout's done. We thought we would finish off today's video. First off, hope you enjoyed the weight training routine. Definitely something to give a try if you're someone who's looking to, you know, just get a little stronger within their rowing muscles. Definitely a great workout to, to give a try sometime. And you can vary up the, the reps and sets however you want to. But anyway, we want to finish off this video talking a little bit about sort of where we left things off uh, after the last vlog. The cliffhanger. The cliffhanger, it was such, first off, the response for that was just so great. Uh, it was really fun to edit, just um, a very crazy day. But I think we left off, we were just chilling on the side of the road. So from there, yeah. we got into an Uber. Yep, and the guy was like, he brought a towel for us because he was the same guy that ended up we having to cancel like five minutes before because we weren't able to make it to the road because we couldn't walk through the weeds. So the same guy came back, brought a towel for us because he knew like we were all muddy and stuff, so that worked out. Um, but you just like crawling into this, yeah. this Uber just in zebra spandex and socks, like crawling out from the weeds. <laughs> I can explain. <laughs> so anyway, we made it back to the boathouse. The problem was, um, wait, I guess we can continue from there because we still, we tried to talk to River City, which is the neighboring boathouse to see if we can yeah. get a launch to go tow the boat back. And long story short, we couldn't. The guy tried to help us out, but we couldn't get the launch out and onto the water. So anyway, at that point, we were just like, shoot, what do we do? Like I tried calling the Port of West Saxing if they have like Coast Guard or a police boat or something. So we saw some sort of government boat patrolling out when we got stranded. And thinking back on it now, we should have just asked that guy, like flagged him down be like, hey, can you tow us back? Help! <laughs> but basically the Port of West Sac wasn't able to help me. They said I could call like some private towing company that tows boats. But like that's probably for motorboats and stuff to break down. I felt like that wasn't really worthwhile just for like our little rowing boat. And pay money. Yeah, I don't know how much that was gonna be. We could uh I don't know, called somebody to just come out and 
and pick us up and not Uber back ourselves and just wait out there. But I didn't know if like anybody's gonna be able to come pick us up, so that's why we Ubered back. Um, well, we we oh, drove our own cars back, but yeah, so we, yeah. we drove back. We're like, okay, well, we know that the tide changes, like the tide, like because we put our boat onto the grasslands. We knew that the tides change, and so. You know, we were kind of the scenario like we're probably just going to have to end up leaving this thing overnight. So let's at least go back, see if we can at least bring the oars back and then bring the boat to a higher, like a higher point. That way it doesn't get caught underwater or something. Here's the crazy thing. We drove all the way back. We hiked all the way back through the weeds, all the owls, all yeah. the pricklies. At least this time we had flip flops. So it wasn't nearly as bad. Not quite as bad. We got down close to where we left the boat and all of a sudden we looked down the water rose like three feet over the course of the time we were gone. The pathway that we walked before we got to the weeds was literally now covered underwater. in, it was underwater. We literally couldn't make it back to the boat unless we were to freaking swim. And yeah. so now we're just sitting there baking in the sun still. We were just trying to do the right thing, bring the boat up higher, get the oars back. And now we're just like, we made it all the way through the weeds and we were just standing by the water. We literally stood there for like 10 minutes, yeah, just I, silent. I couldn't get to the boat and the oars, which I wanted to maybe transport the oars back to my car if I could at least. Um, but I could see them. I could see that they were safe. The water level you could see had like risen to what it looked like as high as it goes based on where the plant and vegetation started. So I thought it was, you know, it probably would be safe to leave overnight. Um, so we debated it for a while. Austin actually had to get to work. So we were on a bit of a time crunch. Um, but we ended up deciding to just go back to the boathouse. Austin had to leave for work. I stayed around, called out one of my friends who was on the team. Uh, he helped me drive a launch out there and then get the boat and tow it back. And so that towing it back, I was going to try to film, but it was actually really hard to film two people. So one person basically driving the boat, the other person holding the rowing boat in the water, just like on the side of the launch. So we're basically just driving nine miles all the way back to the boathouse with one person leaning over the side of the boat holding the rowing boat. Super tiring on the arms, by the way. Kind of sucked, but I figured it was a lot safer to just get the boat back, not have to worry about it, not keep myself awake at night, like worrying about the boat. Yeah, it was like on my mind the whole time at work too, just being like, yeah, boat's out there, like what have we done? Um, but shout out to Cyrus for helping Nick out. Um, and thanks for getting that done because yeah, that was just, they didn't, they didn't have to go to work. Would have stayed to get just to finish off everything. But yeah, it was just the timing of everything. It turned our, you know, our usual hour and a half, two hour, like row venture to like a five and a yeah, half I, hour, I, just I I crazy day. I got out of there like 4 PM or something and we got there at like 8 AM to row originally. So I was there for a long time. Uh, but it, it all worked out in the end and you know i saw some people in the comments of the last video too saying like be prepared like we had our phone which is actually a huge help like if he didn't have his phone for filming the gopro we would have been like exponentially more screwed than we were yeah i can't i mean um, i guess we would have walked back and, and as far as like the type of breakage that we had nobody's gonna carry like an extra rigger with you normally on the team like if we were still on the team rowing at a morning practice the coach drives the launch out there with you so if you had some sort of breakage the, there'd be someone there to help you but obviously since we go out on our own um we didn't have anybody with us so there's not really much we could have done you know i had tape i'm not gonna bring a whole extra rigger to fix a rigger that breaks and to put this in perspective we've rowed for four years on the team uh a little off and on since we graduated and like we've never had a breakage like this before yeah. so it's pretty unusual it's not really something that happens all the time. Yeah. Uh, I think next time we might just bring our flip-flops in the boats. That now, would just, be, just that would, to be safe. That is a good way to be more prepared than we were. So, um, But now our boat's broken. The other boat is still off of campus, or it's, it's off on campus where we are right now, actually, but we can't bring it back. But anyway, our race is not this weekend, but it's the following weekend, and we, we're not really sure about the situation right now. We're going to plan on rowing. We're probably going to have to head back to the boathouse maybe – sometime early next week and maybe re-rig another one of the small boats. Um, but things are still kind of up in the air as far as like what's going to happen. We definitely will have a boat. I confirmed it with the coach. Uh, he is leaving a boat for us to use where it's not sure exactly which boat it's going to be, whether it's one of the two we've been using or not. Um, Hopefully we fit. But you know, it'll work out. It'll work out. It's going to be boat okay. A boat. This has been such a fun journey and we're not going to just not, we're not going to not race. We're going to make sure we figure things out. So Thank you guys as always for coming along for the ride. Um, hope I mean this probably wasn't the most exciting way to have part two to the end of that of that crazy day. Yeah, saga, sorry, there's but. no footage. Um, we were kind of fed up with everything 
it was by the end of that day, so. Yeah, we were both in kind of a really pissed off mood. So one lucky thing though, even though um, my avo I had to like run through the field in my avocado socks, I left them at the boathouse, but Nick saved the day. He picked them up and brought them back. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Let, me, let us know what you think down in the comments below. And we'll see you probably for one more vlog before the big race day. So exciting stuff. So peace out.